Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. This is the VA's description for qualifications, how much money you can receive, and all that good stuff for the post 9 11 GI Bill Chapter 33. So I want to jump into it because there is some nuance. There's a few different things out there with regard to this. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I'm going to throw out the pay stuff first. How much you get paid? How does that work? Where can you look that up? And uh, how do they base that? So we'll start with that and then we'll go into kind of the qualifications for Chapter 33. With that, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I truly appreciate it. Every single one of you that hit the thumbs up really does help to put this into the hands of others that may be looking for this information. And the other way to let YouTube know that this is something to pass on to others is by letting the video run, right? I mean, if you watch more than half of it, uh, and it tells, vid uh, tells YouTube to send this video to other folks, right? Uh, if you want to support the channel in other ways, consider being a member. Thank you so much to all you members. I do my best to get back to you. You can go to the homepage. You'll see the highlighted members and the join button. Thank you. All right, so let's jump into it. Let's talk about the money aspect first. So if you're taking an in-person -per course in the U.S., the VA will base your monthly housing allowance uh, on the monthly military basic allowance for housing, the BAH. Okay, so it's funny because we typically will always call it BAH anyway, but really it is the MHA for chapter 33, which is the monthly housing allowance, whatever, it means the same thing. So we base our MHA, monthly housing allowance, on the monthly military basic allowance for housing, BAH, go figure, everybody wants to be different, uh, rates for an E5 with dependents. So they're going to take your BAH rate for an E5 with dependents. This is called the resident MHA. We use the 2024 rates to calculate the MHA you get between August 1st, 2024 and July 31st, 2025. Okay, so then it'll update and then the, it's just every year it's going to be different, right? So you can use the Department of Defense DOD lookup tool on the Defense Travel Management Office website to find out how much money you may be eligible to receive for housing. You'll need the zip code for the, your school, for your school uh, to get started, all right? So you need the zip code for your school. Then when you bounce over to the um, DOD site, uh, for Defense Travel Management Office. So you can just Google search, uh, really you could Google search uh, the, the BAH uh, um, calculator and uh, you'll see one that is the Defense Travel, uh, the DOD website. So I just put in, I don't know, the most expensive area that I could think of. I'm, I'm sure there's a, a couple that will mirror that, right? New York City type of thing, you know, if you're in Manhattan, right? or uh, San Francisco, California. Anyway, I put in San Francisco, uh, California with a zip code of 94016 uh, with an E5 with dependents. And that number that came back today, in, in September 1st, 2024, is $4,449 per month tax-free. Imagine just for a second, if you were receiving... Um, 100%, right? If you were a 100% rated veteran, we'll say with a spouse and a dependent, and you were also going to school uh, full time at that rate, right? That's well over $100,000 per year, especially when you take into consideration the fact that it is not taxed. So you could essentially gross up that number to come up with a, a realistic grossed amount that you would be bringing in per, per year, per month, whatever. So in any case, uh, well over uh, $100,000 a year between those two benefits, uh, which is, you know, obviously it's expensive in San Francisco. You probably can't really live on that, but if your school was there, right? So moving on, I'm going to jump back into the VA's website because I jumped over to DOD to figure out the dollar amount. Now back into the DOD's website, let's talk about uh, the GI Bill. So uh, let's talk about how much can you, how much of the full benefit rate can you get? All right. 
Eligibility for 100% of the post 9-11 GI Bill benefits is as follows. You're eligible for 100% of the full benefit if the, uh, in this case, if you transferred the money, right? So there's a couple different versions. I'm gonna go with the, I transferred this to um, my dependent. Then I'm gonna come back to the veteran aspect. So uh, one version is you're eligible for the, for 100% of the full benefit of the, if the veteran or service member meets at least one of these uh, requirements by the time you start using the transferred benefits. The veteran or service member served on active duty for a total of at least a, um, 36 months, okay? Uh, or, remember these are or, so you had to meet one of these as the veteran for your dependent to utilize it. And I'm gonna throw out there, if you transfer your post 9-11, consider not transferring all of it, keep like a, a, a month's worth or any amount really, for in the event that you utilize VR and E, Veterans Readiness and Employment, and I'll jump into that in a minute here. So the veteran or service member served on active duty or received a Purple Heart on or after September 11th, 2001, would be another way to qualify for 100%. Uh, or the veteran or service member served on active duty for at least 30 continuous days with on a break and their military uh, force discharged them because of an in-service connected disability. So got out for a medical reason, whatever. So typically it's gonna be probably the first the first one or the last one, right? You served at least your 36 months of uh, active duty or uh, you were medically discharged. Those would be probably the biggest two followed by the Purple Heart. So um, let's jump into uh, the veteran aspects. All right, here we go for veteran. So the post 9-11 GI Bill helps you pay for school, right? Or cover expenses while you're training for a job um, or uh, going to school. If you've served on active duty after September 10th, 2001, you may qualify for the post 9-11 GI Bill or called chapter 33. Find out if you can get this benefit. It goes on to say here, are you eligible? And it has some bullet points. At least one of these must be true. You as the veteran served at least 90 days on active duty, either all at once or with breaks in service on or after September 11th, uh, 2001. You received a Purple Heart on or after September 11th, 2001 and were honorably discharged after any amount of service. You served for at least 30 continuous days all at once without a break in service on or after September 11th, 2001 and were honorably discharged with a service-connected disability, or you're a dependent child using benefits transferred by a qualifying veteran or service member. Now, I'm gonna stop there for a second. Again, if you are in the process of thinking about transferring your post 911 GI Bill benefits, keep the tiniest amount you can for yourself. Why? If you decide later on to utilize Veterans Readiness and Employment, which often leads to some sort of a, a program, uh, whether it is training or education, uh, you will be paid out. If you have any post 9-11 GI Bill remaining, they will pay you out at the housing allowance rate. This is important because the standard subsid uh, subsidence allowance for VRNE is somewhere around a thousand bucks, depending on you know dependents and so forth. If you slide that over to um, mirroring the post 9-11 GI Bill because you have some remaining, doesn't matter how much you have, they will mirror that amount while you're in the program up to $3,251, a substantial difference, right? A $2,200 difference uh, is, is a big difference. So uh, the only way you can get that is if you have any post 9-11 GI Bill remaining. All right, so now let's move on. Uh, here, if you're a member of the reserves who lost education benefits when the Reserve Educational Assistance Program ended in November of 2015, you may qualify to receive restored benefits under the post 9-11 GI Bill. All right, what if I'm eligible for more than one VA education benefit? If you're eligible, you may be able to use more than one education benefit depending on how many qualifying periods of active duty you've completed. If you completed one period of active duty, um, it gives some information there. Uh, if you've completed two, uh, I guess let's let's take a look here. We'll go through it. Uh, you can use if you've 
For a period of active duty that started on or after August 1st, 2011, you can use only one education benefit. You'll have to choose which education benefit you'd like to use. Once you make that choice, you give up the right to use the other benefit. You can use up to 36 months of education benefits. It says here, uh, if you choose to use the post 9-11 GI Bill, you can't switch later. Uh, uh, you can't switch at a later date to use one of these other educational benefits instead. And they list the uh, Montgomery GI Bill. Uh, moving on here, it says though, it is also true that if you choose to use the Montgomery GI Bill, you can't switch at a later date to use the post 9-11 GI Bill. Uh, if you decide to use the post 9-11 GI Bill benefits and you use up all of your entitlement for that benefit, will the VA will refund you part or all of the payments you made to the Montgomery GI Bill and uh, for active duty. The maximum amount that you can get for the refund is $1,200. Uh, it says here, for, for a period of active duty that started uh, before August 1st, 2011, it says here that uh, you can use the Montgomery GI Bill uh, and then switch to use the post 9-11 GI Bill. This is how your decision, uh, this is how your decision to switch affects your benefits. You give up the right to use your Montgomery GI Bill, active duty or select reserve benefits. And if you switch from using Montgomery GI Bill, active duty to using post 9-11 GI Bill, benefits, you can use only your remaining entitlement from Montgomery GI Bill active duty when you start using your post 9-11 GI Bill. It says example, if you have six months of Montgomery GI Bill active duty entitlement left when you switch, you'll have six months of post 9-11 GI Bill benefits to use. It says you can't switch from using post 9-11 GI Bill benefits to using Montgomery GI Bill active duty or select reserve this is because when you choose to use post 9-11 GI Bill benefits, you give up the right to use Montgomery GI Bill active duty and uh, or the uh, select reserve. Whew. Okay, it's welcome to the world of nuance. I say it all the time. It drives me nuts. So now it says if you've completed two or more qualifying periods of active duty. So I re-enlisted, right? So I did whatever, four years, then I re-enlist and I do another X number of years. Okay, so now you have two qualifying periods of active duty. You may qualify for up to 48 months of benefits if you are eligible for post 9-11 GI Bill and either Montgomery GI Bill active duty or Montgomery GI Bill select reserve benefits. Recent changes. This is probably talking about the um, Supreme Court case. So uh, recent changes. If you're using Montgomery GI Bill active duty benefits and you switch to post 9-11 GI Bill benefits, you're no longer restricted to your remaining Montgomery GI Bill active duty entitlement. And if you gave up Montgomery GI Bill active duty or select reserve benefits when you switched to post 9-11 GI Bill, you may now qualify for up to 12 months of additional Montgomery GI Bill benefits for a maximum of 48 months. Note, we consider any re-enlistment a separate, separate period of active duty, but an extension isn't a separate period of active duty. So it has to specifically be a re-enlistment, not an extension. All right, what benefits can I get through chapter 33? Tuition and fees. If you qualify for the maximum benefit, we'll cover the full cost of public and state tuition and fees. We cap the rates for private and foreign schools uh, and up to date or and update those rates each year. All right, so tuition and fees for the institution in which you're going. Now, this could be everybody hyper focuses on college or university, okay? There's also like technical schools uh, or uh, kind of crash course training type schools out there that actually accept chapter 33 and even VRNE. So the example that I love to give because it just opens up the mind a little bit is the Automotive Dealership Institute, which has a month long program that 
get you set up for becoming a finance manager at an automobile dealership or you know tractors motorcycles rvs whatever right so that type of financing they help you find a job after that one month course and training they help you find a job anywhere within the u.s that's an option something like that another option is i want to go get my master's degree in underwater basket weaving cool go do you pick the thing that is going to get you the job and the income that you're looking for sometimes it's not necessarily a degree now look i get it there's a housing allowances tied to all of this stuff which is helpful in life and yes a degree might not hurt you um it's it's not going to hurt you it just not, might not be the tool that's needed to get you the employment that you want so an example again would be cool i'm going to use the automotive dealership institute to land my finance manager job for an example knocked it out in a month i'm good to go i get my feet settled into whatever job that i'm doing and now i start pursuing a bachelor's in x or a master's in y utilizing my benefits so i can continue to get a housing allowance and it just rounds me out or whatever but in the meantime i'm actually doing a job uh, that pays me well you know over 100k or whatever it is and i'm still pursuing my degree um, so i have one and i'm also getting a housing allowance you know what i mean all right so anyway let's move on so tuition and fees so monthly or money excuse me money for housing if you are in school more than half the time will base your monthly housing allowance on the cost of living where your school is located so if you go to school one class a week or whatever it is and that school is in whatever city that's an hour and a half from you that's where your school is located right so you can run through the housing allowance calculator uh, as an E5 with dependents and see how much that will pay uh, in that specific location. Uh, so you can look around before you decide to accept, uh, you know, or decide on whatever school you're going to. Money for books and supplies. You can receive up to the maximum stipend per school year. Money to help you move from a rural area to go to school. You may qualify for a one-time payment if you live in a county with six or fewer people per square mile and you're either moving at least 500 miles to go to school or have no other option but to fly by plane to get to your school interesting do these benefits expire well this depends on when you were discharged from active duty if your service ended before january 1 2013 your post 9 11 gi bill chapter 33 benefits will expire 50 years after your last separation date from active duty service you must use all of your benefits by that time or you will lose whatever's left and if your service ended on or after January 1st 2013 your benefits will not expire thanks to the forever GI Bill all right so if you have any questions here's my two things reach out to the VA's education line have a conversation with them also, all of the schools, even the Automotive Dealership Institute has a veterans liaison who knows how all this stuff works with regard to their specific school. So reach out to your VA accrediting official at any school that you're interested in or whatever it is, right? And have that conversation with them. They'll be able to point you in the right direction and help you get squared away, just like the VA will be able to help you square that away as well. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.